Hello friends, in this video we are going to be looking at how we can fix our textured background in Adobe Photoshop. This is Twisted Creative, Valerie B. Money is my name. If it's your first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. This is the model we are going to be using. If you take a look at the background, we have rumples here and there. We have to use our Ctrl J to duplicate this image. So we have two of them. Okay, we are going to be using this background layer to see the before. Let's select this layer one and go to our patch tool. Then we'll right click here and select patch tool. We have to circle to select particular area and move it to a better position, a better location. So we are going to continue with that. So I'm going to select this area like so and drop it here. So we have the idea now. So I have to select this area like this and push it upward. Then we'll have it selected. So if we take a look at the top side, we still have these rumples and squeezings. So we have to push, we have to select like this and take it to a better location. But don't go too far so as not to not to damage the textures. So we have to select it like so and move it sideways. Move it to the side like this and but some of these are not squeezing they are like the design of the fabric so let's just assume that most of these are let's assume that most of these are foldings So we have this area that need to be filled so we have to take our lasso tool and select this area like so then after selecting right click and feather with any amount like between five and six you can hit ok then you right click and go to content aware field then photoshop is going to be asking if it's going to be using part of this background so you have to detect you have to tell photoshop that this is the area i want you to fill with so we are left with this green area that we want Photoshop to fill this area with. So we we'll have to hit OK. Now Photoshop has done a nice job. So we we'll have to use our Ctrl D to deselect. That area has been filled. So we we'll have to merge this, this background. This is, this is the fill. This is the fill area. So we we'll have to merge it with the original image. We we'll have to select this and select the image and use our control E to merge both of them together. Then we we'll have it filled up. Then if you go in there, you can notice that there may be a little line there. So you can take our patch tool and drag around and move it to, to blend it up. So it's okay. We are going to use our control J two times to create two more copies. We are going to use this one as the image. Then we'll go to the selection tool and click on select subjects. We have the image selected by Photoshop. So we have to go in there and see if there is any correction to be made. We have to select our lasso tool and zoom in to check if there is any correction to make. I'm going to fast forward it to save time.
corrections have been made so we have to right click and feather with two then hit ok then use ctrl c to copy then ctrl v to paste so if you take a look now we will now have our image cut out from the background let's rename this to image let's disable this we are going to be using this as the background so let's rename this as the background we are going to select this background and hold our control to click inside the box of the cutout image to load the selection. Now the selection is back. We'll go to select, modify, then expand. We are going to be expanding by 20 and hit OK. Then we are going to right click and choose content aware field. So look at the results. The image has already been selected. So have the image removed from the original background. This is the result. This is what we are going to get as a result. Then if you check it and you notice that it's okay, you can hit okay for that. So if you take a look, if we disable this top image, you notice that we have empty background without the image. Then we can use our control D to deselect. Disable this, disable this and disable this. You notice that we still have that cut out here. So we don't need this cut out here. We need to merge this cutout with the original background, which is going to be like this. Then we have to select this cutout and hold the original background and use the control E to merge two of them. So we now have the original background empty. So we have to start working on this background by, we can enable this. So for me, I would like to straighten this area of this background. So I have to pick the, so I have to pick the patch tool and select a particular area and move it to a straight area. Then that is what I'm going to be doing. So I have to select here and move it to this other side that has been straightened. Then it, that is just it. So have it straightened. Then if you do take a look at this other side, just like it's, it's like, just like a heel. So we have to straighten it up also. Then we have to take our patch tool and take wherever around here, just take around here and move it. Then we can see, we can, we can take around here also and move it to the straight area, straight part. Okay. Then we have to take this area also and take to the straight part and straighten it. Then here for the last time, we have to take it like this. And as you can see, it is straightened. So we have to select this entire area and take it to a better position. Let's just believe that the background has been cleaned up. And these are the shadow area. We have to remove them. Then, as you can see, we are. Let's remove them in a way. So let's check this area to so see. We notice that we have the image stuff here. Let's fill it up. So this is it. I think the background is clean enough now. We have to bring in the image. So just have to enable this. If you take a look, the image is like a floating image because the background, the original background has been cleaned up and there's no longer shadow. We have to bring in the shadow back. So how do we bring in the shadow back? We have to enable this and pick our rectangular marquee tool and drag around to drop it somewhere around here where the shadow started from. Then we have to right click and feather with 100 should be okay. Then hit okay. Then we have to delete. If you take a look, this is what we have here. Let's disable the other ones. Let's see. And you notice that this is just what we have. Okay, we can enable them back and we we'll go to that particular layer and go to blend mode and choose multiply. Let's rename this as shadow. With the shadow selected, we can go to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. Then we'll start pulling the brightness up until the ground is going to be clean as what we'll be able to use, leaving behind the, just the shadow. So I think it's almost okay like this, but it's not enough. We we'll have 150 a brightness here and it's not enough so we have to go back again and go to image adjustment brightness and contrast and pull it up again to clean it up let's zoom in and see let's see by 34 is okay 
So if you take a look now, you notice that our shadow is back. Let's see the before and after the shadowing. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. Isn't that amazing? Then if you take a look, the shadow is still coming up with some wrinkles. Okay, let's see. This is before and this is after. This is before, this is after. We we'll have to pick our eraser to right click and select just eraser, eraser to. Then we can reduce and we can wipe. With the shadow selected, we can wipe some areas which we don't actually need. These areas are supposed to be for the shadows. Then let's assume that we don't need shadows on this areas Let's take our rectangular marquee tool and drag around the backdrop area the main back let's right click and select and use 50 hit ok then go to filter blur gaussian blur then we can take it to something like i don't want it too much i don't want it too much let's say 10 should be good enough Let's say 8.0 is okay, then hit okay. Use our control D to deselect. Then if you take a look, you notice that we have a very clean background. Let's see the before and the after. Let me hold down the alt and click on this. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. Isn't that amazing already? There's a bonus tip. There is this smooth effect background I shared the other time. Let's take a look at how it's going to look on the image. Let's drag this and drop it on the image. Let's take our move tool and drag it and drop it on the image. Then we can increase or reduce. Let's just put it here, not so big. Put it here. Then we can hit OK. So you go to blend mode and choose screen. Let's increase it a bit. Then you can hit OK. You go to filter blur then gaussian blur and you have to make it as blur as the background will be let it not be too sharp let's say let's say like this is okay then you can go to your opacity and reduce the opacity to your liking so take a look Take a look at what we have here. Let's see the before and after. You can hold our alt again and click on this to see the before and see the after. This is the before, this is the after. Just see how clean the background is. Then let's see before and see after. See before and see after. Isn't that amazing? I believe that is it for this video. If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, let us know in the comment section telling us the area it has helped, the area it has not, and the area we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative Pool, keep on creating. Please stay creative. Continue creating. See you in the next one. Bye.